Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be discussing how to make twin boundary structures. Uh, this is a concept that is a little new to me, uh, but after doing some research on it very briefly, reading some articles and looking up some procedures on how to make these structures, uh, how they're made experimentally and computationally, I think I kind of have the hang of how we can apply this to the silicon structure and so what I'm going to be doing today is taking a crystal of silicon and making a twin boundary structure with it along the 111 plane. Uh, so what, what we're going to do is, you, what you would do is take a normal unit cell of silicon, a uh, diamond structure, you can find this online commonly, and then what you do is you take that diamond structure and you cut and expose the 111 plane of that structure. And so I will put another video in the link uh, about how I show you how to do that. And so basically what you would do is make it so that this uh, this plane here that I have highlighted is the 111 surface of silicon. So just to recap very quickly, this is what I did was I took an FCC diamond packed silicon crystal. I uh, cut and expose the 111 plane, reformulated the unit cell, and that gives me the unit cell you see here. And if you want to know how to do that procedure, I show you how to do it for a gold crystal and a calcium fluoride crystal in previous videos, and you can check that out. Okay, so now, assuming you have those crystals, what we're going to do is we are going to make this into a twin boundary structure. So what we can do is, Let's first analyze this crystal to see where the twin boundary will be placed. And if you look here, how I have this sort of diagonal zigzag occurring in the structure, what we would want, okay, let's follow my cursor here. What we would want is we would want this atom here, instead of going left like this, what we would want is this mirror image here reflected above this surface. So we would want this atom, where my cursor is, to be here. We would want this atom to be here. And so we would basically get um, this layer here just shifted and basically it's flipped mirror image uh, on top of here. And so what we're going to do is we could do that using this little unit cell, but then what would happen is we would have a lot of the, the very next translation in the C dimension would be the same thing. And we should have a few layers of buffer uh, between different copies of the twin boundary. And so we want at least a few, uh, a, a few unit cell constants in the C direction on either side of our twin boundary. So what we're going to do is we're going to first edit this unit cell to make that happen. Um, so let's go to, uh, let me just reorient this. We're, we're going to go to edit, edit data, unit cell, go to transform, and then extend the Z axis by three. Select okay, yes, okay, apply. So now what we are going to do is we are going to make our twin boundary be this, uh, surface right here where I have my uh, where I just made this little draggy thing I don't know what else to call it and anything below this so this whole area right here we are going to reflect uh, on top on top of this boundary that I have outlined here so to do this we first need to save this crystal so let's save it file export data we're going to export it to our folder we're going to save it as silicon 111 uh, one 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 three. So this is the one 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 face exposed, and we have we have it expanded one one three. Okay, I save it as a VASP. Save save it as Cartesian coordinates. Then what we have to do? So I'm just going to exit exit out of here. Uh, oops. And I'm going to reopen it. Okay, there it is. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a procedure I, I commonly employ in other videos, 
and I'm going to cut the x y I'm going to cut the x y z coordinates that we would use for like a quantum espresso input. And so, for example, if I were to take the VASP coordinates of this unit cell, they would definitely be able to use be used in a quantum espresso input file. But if I were to save this as an X, Y, Z and try using the coordinates, I wouldn't be able to, because if I save it as an X, Y, Z, it saves every atom. And a lot of these atoms in this unit cell are repeating. And then, of course, electronic structure calculations, you can't have repeating atoms uh, in your input files. But if I were to save this as a VASP, like I just mentioned, then in that process, it deletes repeated atoms. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to, uh, so here we have the zigzag I was talking about earlier. I'm going to cut out all the repeating atoms and atoms that are outside the unit cell. So I just do this quickly. Feel free to obviously watch the video many times if you need to. Okay, so here I'm cutting the atoms outside. Now I'm going to cut the atoms that are repeating in the periodicity directions or directions of periodicity. So we cut the atoms in the C periodicity dimension, in the B periodicity dimension. Now we need to cut them in the A periodicity dimension. Okay, so here we have our XYZ file. Uh, what I'm going to do now is export this as an XYZ. I'm going to save it as, I'm just going to include this XYZ here. Uh, do not save hidden atoms. Okay, now what we do is we open up an Excel spreadsheet. And we're going to do the, we're going to do a, sh a mirror reflection across this plane here. Okay, and I'm going to show you how we do this in Excel. So we open up Excel. We then open up our XYZ file. So we have 36 atoms in here. I'm going to copy these atoms, paste them in my XYZ file, or <laughs> XYZ file, Excel spreadsheet. So here it's sort of copy them strange. So you go to data, text to columns, just press next a bunch of times and finish. Oops, looks like I have to select them all. Okay, text to columns. Oops, oh, it's only, it's only posted in the first column. Text to columns, next, 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 finish. Perfect. Okay, now I have all of this posted or uh, separated. I'm going to now highlight this last column and go to sort smallest to largest, allow it to expand the selection. Okay, so now it has it sorted for me how I want it. Here I have my silicon atoms, almost all of them. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I have to place the unit cell parameters in columns F, G, and H. So now I'm gonna to go to my VASP file and recall I wanna to go to the one that I expanded. So I, this would be the 113. So I have the X dimension unit cell, not that it matters, but just for doing everything by the books. I'm going to also make this center everything. This would be like, for example, if you wanted to do twin boundaries in different dimensions, what you would do, like say you want to do a twin boundary in the X and a twin boundary in the Y dimension. If I don't know if you could, but I think if you, I, I'm pretty sure if you follow this general procedure, you would, uh, you'd be okay. So now what we want to do is we want to redefine the unit cell dimension in our C axis, right? Because we don't want the, the reflection plane, so to speak, to be about the C axis here or the end of the C unit cell direction here. We want it to be this one. So let's first find the C distance because this atom here in the corner, you can see here, according to this uh, sort of legend, so to speak, or axes, this is zero, zero, zero. So all the way in the C dimension here, this will be close to 28. So this atom will be about 27 in the C dimension. That's down here. Uh, we don't want this to be our reflection plane. We want it to be halfway 
the distance between these atoms plus the C dimension of this atom where my cursor is. So to do that, obviously that's these four atoms here that I have highlighted here in this XYZ file. So what I'm going to do is calculate the difference equals um, this minus this divided by two. Okay, so we want this atom here, or this distance, plus half of the distance between them. Okay, so this is now the point in the C dimension that we want to reflect over to make our twin boundary right here. That's this unit cell. So now what I'm just going to do is I'm going to do the standard procedure of this plus, uh, you know, actually, what I'm going to do now actually is just copy these atoms uh, here. So this will equal this. I'm only going to do the reflection in the C dimension. Maybe I can try to do two dimensions at once in another video. I'm not feeling too confident about it right now. Let me just do what I what I definitely know worked for me at least, so I can get the information to you guys. Okay, so this is going to equal, here's how you're going to do the reflection. This distance plus uh, two times the difference between where the atom is now, or the position of the mirror plane and where the atom is now. And that's going to reflect it across the axis. And you're just going to take these. Oh, I have to keep this to be H2, like that. OK. So now let's bring these down to here. OK. Now the difference is, is that since these two atoms are these two atoms are not being reflected, these four atoms, we're not going to include them in our new coordinates, okay? So let's just delete them here, these last four. What we're going to do now is set this here equal to this column. This will be set equal to this column, and this will be set equal to this column. And then what we do is we just drag these down basically until we get zeros. Okay, got, oh, got zeros fast. Looks like I dragged them a little aggressively. Okay. Then what we can do is go ahead actually and delete these silicons. So we will have how many atoms? You can just count on the left here. We'll have 68 atoms. copy here. I'm going to make a new VAS file. So what I will do is copy this over, rename it, SI1134. Uh, twin.vasp. Copy it over go in here. I am now going to paste in the atomic coordinates from Excel. And recall how many atoms we have. We have 68 because we deleted those four. And our new uh, highest will be in the C dimension will be 52.518. I can just type that in 52.518. Okay, let's save this. Open silicon twin VASP. Okay, and we have it. So let me turn it here and let me show you where the plane is, if you can see it. Let's go to edit lattice planes, new. 
So we have to do the C dimension, so we want our Miller indice to be 0 in the A, 0 in the B, and 1 in the C. And we want it to be halfway, so 0.5. Okay, there we have it. Let's go ahead and expand the boundary 3. Uh, maybe one more for special effects. Okay, so here we have it. Oh, it looks like this is a little hard for my computer to handle. Let's move it to three. Okay. So as you can see here, let's zoom in a little more. Okay. Um, trying to just get a good picture for your, for you guys. Um, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that would be like this. Okay. Now let's check this out. So we have here, if you can follow my cursor, we have like, <clears throat> let's do out a little, one more. We have going from right to left, this uh, sort of zigzag. Then we hit the twin boundary and now we go left to right. And so I think this is the structure for silicon. So when I originally had, here would be a twin boundary occurring along the 111 plane, which is what I think I read happens in experiment. Um, you, you, when I initially started out and I made this unit cell three in the Z dimension, you can make it any number you want. You can make it five, you can make it two, you can even keep it as one. Uh, and you can do this for any like crystal really, I mean, that you want to. So just to turn it around, you can see all aspects of the boundary, how it looks. And yeah, basically you have mirror images on the side, on the other side of the boundary. Um, okay, so thank you for uh, watching. If I happen to totally mess this up and I have this wrong, please let me know. Like I said, this is new to me. Uh, if it is wrong, yeah, just let me know. We can learn together and I can fix it. And um, Or if I have it right, that's great. Let me know. Or if there's anything else I can do, uh, feel free to leave it down in the comment section. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a nice day.